Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This time it's not going to be a straight up review video, but it's more going to be just me talking about the Shure SE215s, why I purchased it, and whether or not it is still a viable option in 2020. Now back then I used to have the clear SE215s, and those were actually my first pair of in-ear monitors I have ever purchased. That was back in 2017, and I've had them for about two years. I actually did a review on them in 2019 before I sold them. Since then I have owned the KZ ZSTs, the ZS10 Pro, TIN Audio T2s, FA7, and now the FA9. But actually a couple of days ago, uh, in July 2020, I purchased another pair in white. These are purchased directly from Shure's website, and they have since dropped the prices on all of their IEMs. The SE215s with the BT2 Bluetooth cable now cost $79 with free one day shipping. Now when you think of the 215s, most people now consider them to be outdated and overpriced because there's a ton of other options on the market for cheaper. Specifically, there's a lot of Chinese IEMs that have much better sound quality such as the Blonde BL03, ZS10 Pros, or the famous Tin T2s. I own both the Tin T2s and the ZS10 Pros, both of which can be found for even half the price of the 215s, and they both do sound much better in certain areas. So why did I purchase these? Well, it actually goes back to the reason why I bought the Tin T2s in the first place. You see, the reason why I bought the Tin T2s was because I wanted a fairly inexpensive earphone that I would wear while I'm outside running or mowing the lawn, uh, anything. Basically, I wanted an earphone to take with me that is both comfortable and will isolate noise. The 10 T2s don't really fit the bill. They are pretty heavy being an all aluminum build. Uh, their sound isolation is below average because of the design and because they are both vented and they also weren't that comfortable for me. So if you noticed, sound quality wasn't a top priority in this case because when I'm running or doing things outside, I'm not really concerned about hearing all the finest details in my music. That I leave to my higher end IEMs, like my FA9, uh, when I'm sitting at home just enjoying music to really experience the sound to the fullest. The SE215s to this day, I found still are one of the most comfortable IEMs that do an excellent job isolating sound. They are thinner than I remember, and when they are in my ear, they sit really deep, so I can also lay my head on the side of a pillow and it not be uncomfortable. I think out of all the earphones I have tried, these are still probably the most comfortable out of them all because they are so lightweight and thin. Now these from experience are also pretty durable and can take a pretty good beating. The body itself is pretty strong, it's made of some kind of plastic, but the part that tends to break the easiest is the nozzle. Now the nozzle never broke on my old pair and I hope it doesn't break on this one, but this is the part that most people complain about but durability otherwise has been pretty good. But let's of course also talk about the sound, since these are earphones. These are both better and worse than I remember. Uh, let me explain. Hearing the 215s by themselves again, after a few years of various better sounding IEMs, they didn't sound as bad as I expected them to be. They still have that warm, dark, bass emphasized sound with the treble rolled off, but I found it's pretty enjoyable and easy to listen to, and it's never fatiguing. Soundstage is still narrow, and the imaging is average. However, when I directly compare them side by side with the ZS10 Pros or the Tin T2s, then I could clearly tell that the 215s were much muddier, the bass was a little bloated, and a lot of the detail is missing, and also the soundstage wasn't as good. Compared to the Tin T2s specifically, uh, objectively, I think the Tin T2s are a better sounding pair of earphones in basically every aspect. So I can see how for most people, the Tin T2 will obviously be the better choice. However, sound is also subjective. Even though the Tins are technically superior uh, sound-wise in almost every way, the treble peak at around 8k to 10k is too harsh and sibilant for me. Now like I have said in my previous videos, my ears are very sensitive to treble, so I can't really listen to vocals on the Tin T2s because it's not that enjoyable to my ears. Every time someone makes the S sound, 
it's like piercing my eardrums. So for me, I would actually rather pick the 215s. So I think if you're considering to buy the SE215s nowadays, it really depends on your tastes and what you're buying it for. If you just want the best sound for the price, these aren't it. However, for $79, you do get free one day shipping, which is always excellent. You get a solid Bluetooth cable, and you get a very comfortable and isolating pair of earphones with mediocre but warm sound. Most importantly, you get sure customer service, which has been shown to be pretty good. If I have problems with the cheaper Chinese earphones, for example, help is sometimes non-existent with those companies. Now that brings me to the end of this short review of the SE215s. For me, I can say that they are still worth the $79 that I purchased them for because they fit exactly what I'm looking for, where sound isn't my top priority. I also think there are a lot of people who will find no problems with the sound that these can produce. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the Shure SE215s and whether or not you think it's still a viable option today. So that's it. I will see you guys in the next video.